Okay, in the last video, we were looking at graphing equations, um, y equals mx plus b. And each of those equations okay, was of that form, y equals mx plus b, where m was the slope or the rate of change, and 0 comma b is the y-intercept or the starting value. Okay, so the examples we had were a few that had y equals 2x to start off with, and then y equals 2x plus 3, and y equals 2x minus 4. Okay, notice that we had, uh, when we graphed those using a table of values, we had three parallel lines. And again, remember that the coefficient, the number in front of x, that told us how to count the rate of change or the slope or the slant of your line. So with y equals 2x, okay, that's the black one here in the middle, the y value goes up by 2 every time the x value went up by 1. So what that meant was, take any point to start at, if we start at say negative 3, negative 6, so this point right here, the first one in our table, if we count a y value up 2, so we go up 2, and then x value positive 1, we go to the right 1, that keeps us on the line. Do the same thing for the next pair of points, up 2 to the right 1, up 2 to the right 1, that keeps us on the line. Even though, in part b, we have a plus 3 at the end of our equation, the same pattern happened. Every time the y value added 2, the x value added 1. Okay, so on that one, we had a y-intercept here of 0, 3. So if you count a y value going up 2 and an x value of positive 1, we go to the right 1, up 2 to the right 1. Okay, so that's how we stayed on that line. Okay, then we had, um, so we, each of those lines was increasing. They were all parallel because they had the same coefficient of x. Okay, or the same rate of change or slant. Okay, and then we had y equals negative 2x and negative 2x plus 3. Y equals negative 2x minus 4. And the only difference there now was we had decreasing lines Okay, because the rate of change was negative, which means the y value was decreasing. Okay, So when the y value went down by 2, the x value went up by 1. So now to stay on those lines, we're going down 2 to the right 1 instead of up 2 to the right 1. Okay, and then we had a few examples where we had some different uh, rates of change or different coefficients for x, okay, different slopes. When the slope was 1 half, what we did there was we went up 1 for y to the right 2 for x, up 1 to the right 2. If um, the slope was 3 halves, okay, what we did there was we went up 3 to the right 2. So every time y went up by 3, the x value went up by 2. So the y, uh, y value goes up by 3, x goes up by 2, or to the right 2. For the negative 3 fourths, okay, there, the y value goes down by 3 whenever x went up by 4. Okay, so on that one, okay, that was part C here, the red graph. So if you count down 3 and to the right 4, you end up on that same line, down 3, to the right 4. Okay, so that's what we did last time. And each of those are in y equals mx plus b form. Okay, and again, it's because when you look at the form here, y equals m times x plus b. So here, m in part b, m is 3 halves, b is negative 1. In part c, y equals m would be negative 3 fourths, and then x plus b, so your b value will be 6. Okay, so what we're getting into now is rather than making a table of values, can we make our process of graphing these lines a little bit faster? Okay, and the answer is going to be yes. Okay, so when we look at y equals mx plus b, m is the slope or the rate of change. 0b is the y-intercept or the starting value. Another way to look at m or the slope, uh, you're probably familiar with rise over run. Okay, so rise is going up or down, run is going left or right. Vertical change over horizontal change, change in y over the change in x. Okay, so change in y is vertical change, change in x is horizontal. And then there's also this little formula here using subscripts, y2 minus y1. That's how you find the change in y values. So if y went from, say, 4 to 6, that'd be a change of 2 because... 6 minus 4 would give you a positive 2. So if you went from 4 to 6, you increased by 2. Change in x, x, x2 minus x1. We'll get more into that formula uh, later on in the, in the uh, course.
or they're in the packet. Okay, now what slope is? It's a measure of a slant of the line or the line's rate of change. If the slope is positive, then the line increases. So as you go from left to right, the y values will get higher. Okay, the graph will or the line will increase. If the slope is negative, then the line decreases. Okay, so just like in those first examples, if I look at number three again, y equals one half x plus four. Well, there the number, the coefficient of x is one half is positive, and that was the black graph. Notice how it's increasing, going up. Okay, part B, y equals 3 halves x minus 1, that was the blue graph. Notice how it's going up as you go from left to right. And then in part C, that was neg y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 6. Okay, so there the slope was negative 3 fourths. Notice that the line is decreasing. We went down 3 to the right 4 to stay on that line. Okay, so we have a linear function, or linear relationship, if the slope remains constant. In each of the uh, previous graphs of lines, you may count the slope the same each time. In y equals 1 half x plus 4, notice you may count up 1 into the right 2 between any pair of points on the line. Also, notice you may count an equivalent uh, ratio to 1 half and still be on the line. So negative 2 over negative 4, negative 1 over negative 2, 2 over 4, and so on. Now I'm going to explain what that means by looking at that graph again. y equals 1 half x plus 4. Okay, again, that was the black graph on this one. Now notice, if I just start at negative 4, 2, if I start at this point, if I go up 1, so up 1 box to the right 2, up 1 box to the right 2, I stay on that line. It doesn't matter what point I started at. I could also go an equivalent ratio. Well, an equivalent ratio to 1 half, okay, to 1 over 2, an equivalent ratio will be any of these fractions here. Now let me just start with the positive 2 fourths. Now would you agree that 2 fourths reduces to 1 half if you reduce by 2's? So let's look at it this way. If I started at that same point again at negative 4, negative 2, I'm sorry, negative 4, positive 2, if I start at that point, instead of going up 1 to the right 2, if I were to go up 2 to the right 4, up 2 to the right 4, I stay on that line up to to the right 4. So that is the same slope as 1 half. So positive 2 fourths is the same slope as 1 half because it reduces to the same value. Now I could do the same thing with 3 divided by 6. If I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I stay on the line. Let's look at the negatives. If I look at negative 1 divided by negative 2, if you divide that out, a negative divided by negative is positive, so we'd have positive 1 half. Well, just looking in terms of counting boxes, a negative y is going to tell you to go down 1. So if I started at that same point, negative 4, 2, and went down 1, a negative 2 in the x direction, instead of going right 2, I'm going to go left 2. Notice how I stay on that same line, down 1, left 2 stays on that same line. If I take any other point, suppose I start at the y-intercept at 0, 4, if I go down 1 to the right 2, you see I stay on that line. Okay, so if we examine how negative 2 over negative 4 and negative 1 over negative 2 are counted, okay, that's what we just talked about, okay, that negative 2 over negative 4, you would go down 2 and to the left, 4. For negative 1 over negative 2, you would go down 1, left 2. So essentially, if you did negative 2 over negative 4, you're just doing negative 1 over negative 2 twice, okay, which will keep you on that same line. Okay, so that's a very important concept is to understand that even though the number in front of x here is 1 half, you can really look at any ratio that's equivalent to 1 half as far as uh, what your slope is. And that's how you can count your slope. Okay, so in number 4, it says graph the lines with the given slope passing through the given point. Okay, so in, in part, um, part B, it's given us the first one is slope is negative 2, and it passes through the point 0, negative 5. 
So when we look at a slope of negative 2, the idea there is to count a slope of negative 2, you want to treat that as a fraction because you're looking at the change in y over the change in x or the rise over run, okay, however you want to look at that, or how you want to think about the slope. So if you make it, if you make the slope a fraction, then it'll kind of help you out. So the change in y is negative 2, which means we're going to go down 2. And then the change in x is positive 1, which means we're going to increase x by 1, which means we're going to go to the right 1. Okay. Now the, there's a little issue there is, well, if you, if you want to count down 2 to the right 1, well, you can always count down 2 to the right 1, but from where? So they have to give you a point that we know is on the line. They tell you that 0, negative 5 is on the line, so we're going to start at that point. So we're going to plot the point 0, negative 5. So remember, those are just x comma y's. So when x is 0, y is negative 5. So we're going to start at this point down here. And then from that point, we're going to count down 2 to the right 1. That's a slope of negative 2. Now the fact that it's a negative slope tells us we have a decreasing line, which means it's going to be falling. So down 2 to the right 1. Now notice we can't plot another point because we're off the grid. So notice that going down 2 to the right 1 is the same thing as going up 2 to the left 1. Up 2 to the left 1 will keep us on that same line. Okay, so we can graph our line. Okay, we'll take our straight edge and graph it. And when you graph these, you want to graph them throughout the entire grid. Okay, so they go through the all the boxes. Okay, now it says in part B, so we have, we have the graph uh, of the line drawn. Now we want to write the equation of the line. Well, the equation of the line, you want to think about y equals mx plus b. Okay, that's coming right from up here. Okay, y equals mx plus b is the, is the uh, slope-intercept form of our line. Okay, so what is the slope of our line? The m value is negative 2. So y equals negative 2x, and then plus b. Well, plus b, okay, 0 comma b is the y-intercept, or the starting value. Well, our y-intercept is at negative 5, so we have minus 5. Now, now, really, you're looking at plus negative 5, but plus negative turns into minus, so just write as y equals 2x, I'm sorry, negative 2x minus 5. Okay, let me write that neater. Okay, so there's the equation of our line. Okay, for the next two, we have a slope of two fifths and a y intercept of zero three. So we're going to start at zero three, okay, which is our y intercept at zero three. So we know that plus b is going to be plus three. And then the two fifths, that's our slope, which means the y value changes by positive 2, so we go up 2, and then the positive 5 for the x tells us to the right 5. So from that y-intercept, we go up 2, and then to the right 5. Okay, same as going down 2 to the left 5. Down 2 to the left 5. Okay, notice there's only a few points that fit on that one. But when we graph that with our straight edge, we'll connect the points to get that nice line. Now, um, to explain why going, um, how come a slope of two fifths going up to to the right 5 is the same as going down to left 5. Well, think about up 2 to the right 5 is positive 2 fifths. Down 2 is a negative 2 for the y value. And then left 5 is negative 5 for the x. So when you reduce that, you get 2 fifths. Okay, you get positive 2 fifths. So up and to the right will keep you on the same line as going down and to the left. Okay, the last one. Um, the slope of negative 3 halves through the point zero 06. 
So we have the y-intercept here at 0, 6. Oops, I'm sorry, I forgot to write the, write the equation of that line for that last one. y equals mx plus b, well m is 2 fifths. So 2 fifths times x, and then plus b will be plus the y-intercept of positive 3. Okay, so there's the equation of the line. Okay, now, number three, the last one. The slope is negative 3 halves, goes through the point zero 06, so we plotted the point zero 06 right here. And then a negative 3 half slope. Okay, this one is one that students miss a lot. Okay, if you look at it, um, there's a few different ways to look at it. Okay, one way is when you take a fraction and get a negative answer, either the numerator or denominator is negative, but not both. So you can look at this as negative 3 divided by positive 2 or as positive 3 divided by negative 2. Okay, either of those is okay, and I'll explain each of those in a second. I generally say put the negative in the numerator. So here when you divide a negative by a positive, you end up with negative 3 halves. So what, how you would count that, a negative 3 in the numerator means you would go down 3 in the y direction and then a positive 2 in the denominator, you would go right 2. Okay, so down 3, right 2. So if I start at 0, 6, and go down 3, and to the right 2, again, we have a, we have a negative slope, so we know it's decreasing, so we know it's going to be falling here. Okay, a decreasing pattern. Down 3, to the right 2. Okay, and if we connect those with our ruler, That's the third one. If we look at the, another way to count those, those uh, rate of change or the slope, okay, notice that if I start at this point here, if I go up 3 and then to the left 2, I stay on that line. Well, that's what 3 over negative 2 would be. So a positive 3 in the numerator means we go up 3, and a negative 2 in the denominator means we go left 2. And again, notice going up 3 into the left 2 keeps us on that line. So negative 3 divided by 2 is the same ratio as 3 divided by negative 2. They're both a ratio of negative 3 halves. Okay, that's tricky for people to understand. So the equation of our line is y equals, well m is negative 3 halves, and then times x, and then plus b, well the plus b will be plus positive 6, so plus 6. Okay, so there's the equation of that line. Okay, moving along. Okay, now we're going to find the slope between two pairs of points. So if you want to find the slope between the points 1, negative 5 and 3, 2, if you want to find the slope between them, what you're looking for is what is the change in y divided by the change in x. Okay, or the rise over run. Well, notice the y values here are negative 5 and 2, and the x values are 1 and 3. Now that is where this formula is going to come in that you can use. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, what we're looking at is we're looking at two points now as x1, y1, okay, like your first ordered pair and x2 comma y2, your second order pair. So if we look at it in that context, 1, negative 5, and 3, 2, that's like your x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2. So if you use the slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, if you use those, well, y2 is 2, y1 is negative 5, so we'd have m equals, so slope equals, 2 subtract negative 5, because it's minus there, so we're minusing a negative 5, divided by 3 minus 1. So 2 minus negative 5 is positive 7, 3 minus 1 is 2.
Okay, so the slope is seven halves, which means to get from one point to the other, you'd have to go up seven to the right two. Okay, take a minute and do the slope for B and C. Okay, and I'll put the answers up here just for the sake of time. Okay, so if you need to pause the video, go ahead. Okay, I'll put the answers up here. Okay, you just have to be careful with your signs. A lot of people miss these because of their signs. Um, just like with the two minus negative five there. Okay, um, in the second example, when you do y two minus y one, so two subtract negative four, so two subtract negative four, 